Hello everybody, this is Diane. I'm still at work on the Renaissance Journal. I have gotten quite a bit of work, of preparation work done, and now I am ready to start applying the ephemera that we've been making onto the pages. I'm so excited. I love when I get to that stage. So I have the pages all cut. I did some copy dyeing last night, and so my scrapbook paper is copy dyed. Um, and then today I have stenciled on the white pages and I have added some lace to the edges and I have selected items to add to pages and I've got some stamps right here next to me so that I can add some stamping to some of the pages and I want to show you the cover because we had started this yesterday remember I embossed right here and here. Now this whole section right here is embossed with this diamond pattern and that's all that's left that you can see. There's a little tiny corner right there but that's okay. I It still adds a nice element of texture down in the corner and it's different from this and I wanted it to be um, like a lot of different things. So you can see I did the embossing right here. It doesn't, it didn't emboss much on this edge because this is uh, added paper, so it's not on the same level. So the stamp didn't touch down there, but there's a little bit of embossing there. I added a scrap of Lorna's paper here. This was just taken out of a book that I had. And I added this beautiful jeweled piece that I had in my stash and a piece of my Florentine paper and a little bit of lace. That's what I have so far for the cover. Now I will take one of the signatures and start adding to this. I just tore this piece from one of Lorna's pages um, to just add a little tuck spot here. I'm putting pockets on the fronts of the signatures, but I didn't want to cover up this page, this picture, with that vaulted ceiling inside of the castle, I presume. So I'm just adding a little strip here to make a tuck spot. But of course I have to ink it. I didn't do any of the inking. I've got my boys here today doing school. And I did the stenciling and the sewing of the lace. Um, before lunch and then I had to stop and make lunch for them and Teddy only had a half a day of school so he's done already so I took him with me after lunch and went to the post office and the post office if I go to the one in Waverly New York it's really close to the coffee shop that just opened this week that my son is the manager of so we went there and I got some hot chocolate to go and I left Teddy there while they made the cocoa and I walked to the post office because it's just like a block away maybe two blocks and then we came home and I drank my cocoa and now I'm ready to get to work that just makes a nice little tuck spot and adds some color to that page and we'll figure out what to put into these tuck spots and pockets later. So, moving on. Well, let me finish this one because this is different, a different sort of pocket. This is a page from the illuminated manuscript paper. Um, it's Lorna's kit and it's, it's called time, The Time of Illumination, set one. And this is from Mrs. Coggs, and it's from the Leonardo da Vinci drawings set that she has. So that is going to form a pocket, two of these together. this will show up. It's pretty distressed all around it anyway. And 
I think I'll just glue it. I'm not going to sew it. So this to this. I'll just glue it. And then it'll be a tuck spot right there. The pages, the, the images are wide enough that I think I don't want the lace to be a problem moving it in and out over here, which is I like often like to have a front page that has a side loading pocket, but sometimes it has to be top loading, and that's what we're going to do today. throw that bottle of glue around. Sometimes it's hard for me to figure out which is the right side up because these letters are so um, odd that some of the letters look upside down. So I have to look at it and I know this is right side up. These are Latin pages. So I have no idea what they say. And this is going to cover part of the edge of that lace, but that's okay. And I'll just have to make some a tag that's long enough to go in there. I'm dripping glue all over. I think when I'm done with this journal, I'm going to want to keep it. But I won't. I will sell it. I just love these images. I made Renaissance journals before using some of my very, very, very favorite Graphic 45 paper, which isn't available anymore. And I really wanted to keep that too, but I didn't. I get to enjoy it. I um, rewatch the videos from back then when I made those journals. Sometimes I rewatch videos of my own to like remember some of the things I did. I love the way this stenciling turned out. Turned out with the looks like arched window and then the uh, gothic text there. I think that's German. Those are both Tim Holtz stencils. We might as well finish this one. This one is not Mrs. Cog's. I'm not rem I don't remember where I got that, but it's it's in my computer in my digital files. But it's a uh, I believe it's a Botticelli painting. Again, that's one of Lorna's pages. Most of the text is covered, but I left a whole line of text at the bottom so you could see it. Now let's see where we can put some of the other ephemera that we've been making. I often use the scrapbook paper, the pattern side of the scrapbook paper, to add elements like these two because those pages are not ones that you could usually write on easily. And I don't like to take up writing space. I don't like to take that away from you. Okay, uh, this is the first signature, so 
let's continue on with this one. So here's the piece that we made with the mica on it. And it is um, a tuck spot. with a card or a tag to tuck in there. I did a little stenciling here with a fleur-de-lis just for fun. I sprayed this page instead of stencil it because I had a lot of pages to stencil so I sprayed one page in each signature. I did a very light stencil on the inside of the card that I added. Here is that little piece. I think I did made this on camera, unless it's the video that I didn't publish. But I folded a, I drew this shape and then folded the paper in half and cut it so it was even and then used that to trace that out. But I think I wanna do something else before I glue that down. Add a little bit more embellishment to this page. But first I'm going to ink. Some of the pockets on the other signatures are going to be different because I only did one with the mica. So I did, instead of doing three of the same pocket for these journals, I'm just doing some specialty pockets. So there's only one of each pocket in the journal, but I will put a pocket on that same page within this, you know, if it's on it's on this page in this signature, it'll be on this page in the next signature. Okay, so I want to add that, but what do I want to do first? I think I'll add a little bit of script stamping. So this is why I took this ink or this stamp off of the block, the wooden block, so I could, I don't have to lay it down like a, a whole stamp. I can just kind of fold it and touch it down a little bit like that. And you can still write over that. Is that all I need? Yeah, I think that's good enough. I don't want to take away from your journaling. This is the page of Lorna's that I took this from. It came from there. Doesn't matter that I turned it upside down because there's no writing on it and design is fine this way. And then I took another piece off of this side, but this one will end up right side up with the writing. I think that looks good. Should I do some of that? Let's do a little bit on this side. I know the lighting isn't great in here today. It is a gloomy day. It's warm. We're having a warm day. 
Here is the image that I sewed to a piece of the gold cardstock and then I added the lace on top of it with some more gold, another piece of lace. So this is going to be a pocket that I, it'll be a side loading pocket here. This is all going very fast, but you know, it took me a couple of days to get all this stuff prepped. Actually, I got my supplies out on Monday and today's Thursday. So it's taken me this long just to get things prepped this far. I didn't put anything on the back here, at least not yet. I might put some vellum, a vellum pocket or envelope or something on it. Because again, I don't want to cover that. Let's see what pockets we have for this signature. Okay, this one has... Now I was going to do three pockets here. I'm just going to put this one here for size to show you, but I think it is just a little too close. So I decided to just put two and then I'll just put a piece of pretty trim in between them. And then I have these gorgeous tags that will fit, fit in there. Won't that be pretty? Well, let's see. We can see right now. Again, these pockets were made with Lorna's paper. I love those music notes there with the pretty decoration. I already inked around this one, so I'm just going to ink this one. These are right side up. Again, it's a little hard to tell, but that M is right side up. And that T is right side up. If you did not see the making of these ephemera pieces, there are two videos that come before this video that show how I made the ephemera. Some uh, some of them I didn't make on camera because I made the vid I did make them on camera, but I didn't upload the video because I was interrupted and had to cut it short. But I did in the next video talk about how I made them, so that is available. Nothing is very complicated. They're not complicated. They're just pretty. Just lightly put some glue on here since this ribbon is mesh. Put it on the edges and then a little bit where the sequins are just because you won't be able to see the glue because of the sequins. See how we did here. That makes a pretty page.
So these tags are made with Lorna's paper as a background, and this came out of a book, this little border, and this came out of a different book. I've been cutting up books like crazy when I watch TV at night. My hand was getting sore from cutting, and I'm still not done cutting. I think I got all the Renaissance stuff cut, and I know I'm not going to use it all in this journal. I just want to have it all cut when I put it away. And so now I have to start working on the medieval stuff. So anyway, this is the page with the tags in it. And on this side of the page, I'm going to add this piece that we made with a metal embellishment, and this will be a tuck spot. That's another of da Vinci's drawings. I just love all these images, and it was really fun making the ephemera. And I will tuck something in there eventually. Just make sure there's no wet glue here. Seems to be okay, but I'm not going to close any pages on that, just in case. I'll just set that aside. This page, um, this book page, I wanted to have this in the journal, but this page is nothing I wanted in the journal. And it's an old book, so it was fragile and looked like it was, it was starting to crack in the center. So I added a piece of paper, and there were some little cracks up here at the top. So I added, no, there were top cracks up here. That's why I added that washi tape, and then I added this washi tape because there was uh, some a line of text there that I could see. Uh, and I wanted to add this paper to it before I sewed the lace on, but now I'm going to finish. I'm going to add a piece of graph paper to this side, and then I have some embellishments that I cut out of books that I want to add. this pretty lady. When I was little and I drew a princess, she had a cone hat with a veil on it. Must be, uh, I loved fairy tale books, so I must have seen a lot of those images in fairy tale books. I'm going to glue her to some cardstock. Just got some plain white cardstock here. Because I want her to be a tuck spot. going to ink her. I'm just going to leave her the way she is. Oops. 
She's off the page a little bit. And then over here, I'm just going to add this. It's a pole with a deer on it that would have been on the tilting field. There's a little crack right there. So it's time for some more washi tape. I think I didn't cover that one before because I thought maybe the embellishment that I added would cover it. But it doesn't go, doesn't go clear to the edge of the page because of the shape of it. This little pole here would have had the pennant on the end of it. I think I'll use this glue with my tiny tip. cute. Sorry, I'm just trying to get the cap on this. Yeah, I like that page. That's fun. And I think we have more to do on this signature. There's another one of those pieces, but we've already done that, so I will save that for when you're not watching. I don't know if I will... Oh wait, I did that on... I wanted it on this coffee dyed paper. So I'll do a little bit of stamping too on this. Oh, I've got it all tangled up now. On the back, I want to put a tuck spot, so I have some options here. I could put her on. I don't want her to look like she's got extremely short legs. So I want to put her down so it's obvious that she's cut off. So something like that. Or I could put that on. I, I just left that on so I would remember what it is. It's an astrolabe made for Elizabeth in 1559 by the Flemish instrument maker Thomas Gemini. She had a number of astrolabes made for her during her lifetime. I'm going to have to look up what an astrolabe is. I heard, I've heard of them. I think they're very neat looking, but I can't, I couldn't tell you what it's used for. I really like the way that looks there. And then I have this little painting of Elizabeth that would make a fun pocket. So it's that one or that, or that. I think I'm going to go with the astrolabe, actually. I'm just going to rub this with my vintage photo because there's white in there that I didn't want to cut out. Just make that less noticeable. See, that looks better. Sorry about the lighting again. Can't help it. I have all my lights on. I 
I love making tuck spots out of items that I cut from books. <coughs> Not necessarily square, or rectangle, or you know, normal shapes for a pocket or a tuck spot. Something like that. You know, it's really fun to do. I do that a lot. I will want to use some of my pretty fabrics and or trims to make some tabs. There'll probably be a lot of tabs. And maybe I'll put dangles on the tabs. If it's Renaissance, it has to be fancy, right? And it will be fun to go back through and add the cards and tags in all of these pockets. I might add a label or something on this also. But for now, let's get to the last signature. So these are the pockets, again, that I'm adding and I'm putting this piece of trim in the center, but you saw me work on that previously, so let's see what else we have. Something different. Seems like there should be something there. There's that element. Here's the pocket that we made with my Joann's paper, the handmade paper. I'm just going to sew that on, or glue it on, and it, that's really quick and easy. I should have something back here too, so. Um, did I already have something for there? I don't think so. So I could use one of these here. This shows up better. Right about there, I think. bits of white here. I guess that's just her pearl earring. That can be white. These book pages are kind of sturdy, but I just want to make them sturdier. I'm going to glue her down, but I'm not going to cut her out and make the tuck spot here on camera because I think we will start adding some stamping to some of the pages before I run out of time.
should probably show you this pile of stuff here. These are Mrs. Cog's images and things I've cut out of books. This is a huge pile of stuff that I can use to tuck into all these pockets. It's too late, but... Oh no, it's not too late. I didn't glue her down yet. Is she better? She looks like the queen, and she looks like a lady, lady in waiting. But she shows up better, I think. Yeah, we'll stick with her. Okay, let's go back to the first signature. This one doesn't feel as fat as the, those other ones. I'm just going to do some stamping. So I want to stamp something on this page. I love this image. I'll use my Thistle Archival Ink. I'll make sure I like the color first. Pretty, but I think because it's going to be opposite this blue and brown, I might use a different color. I could use it here. need something here. So I will use brown. This one is ground espresso. I'll use this one. These are both Anna Griffin stamps. This lady, I believe that's a, from a Da Vinci artwork. She doesn't always stamp very well, though. It's very old. This stamp is quite old. So I'm going to practice first. Well, that's not bad. Now if I can do it again. I think I'll do it this way. So I can press down on the paper. Yeah, that looks good. one on this page. I 
Oh, that turned out nice. Just do a little something here. I've got all these really beautiful corner stamps. It's not exactly a corner stamp. Let's do this one. Didn't want it to be too swirly because I have swirly stuff there. That looks cute. I like that. this corner stamp so I think when I use corner stamp in this journal that's the only one I'm going to use This is very shiny. I'll probably cover that with something that you can journal on. Well, I still have to add some trims and tabs. If I want to go back in and do some more stamping, I can. But that's what I've got for today. And I hope that you enjoy just seeing how we put these elements that we created to use and see the progress on these journals so far. I am loving this. I love this um, theme and these images and having so much fun with it. So I hope you're enjoying it too. I'll see you in the next video and I hope you have a creative day today. Bye-bye.